What's up, y'all? It's your mama, little brother, you cool, Uncle OG Free. We got that coaching game on the day, y'all. I mean, gonna be some isms going on. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So we talking about this coaching and all that. <clears throat> Out there in the starting Cali, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know OJ passed away, man. OJ, man. You know what I'm saying? OJ was real Hollywood, though. You feel me? What I mean by real Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? He was dealing with real Hollywood families. Like, out there in Hollywood, like, he lived in Hollywood. He was a Hollywood figure. So, I'm, I'm saying that to say that due to, you know, probably who he was married to, and, you know, things of that nature, him being friends with, you know, the Kardashians and things of that nature. So, he was Hollywood. So, he's going to be in Hollywood Five. His, his situation going to always be in Hollywood Five. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <clears throat> like I said, <clears throat> we got this coaching on today. It's going to be some ism kick today, y'all. I might be on here all day today kicking ism, you hear me? Since I'm on OJ and we're in Cali, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure this shit out. Okay, I, what the fuck is Wack 100 doing talking about meat meals? Wack meat meals. Wack, you the, wasn't you the same nigga that was on your stomach, greased up? Wasn't you the same nigga that was on your stomach, greased up? But you want to talk about me. Ain't you the same dude, Wack? <clears throat> Don't you got a... You and Ray J supposed to be coming out with a transgender show? Why you just ain't invite Meek on to your show? <laughs> hey, that's what you should do. <laughs> you should invite Meek on to your show. You hear me? You know, I can feel you probably talk about Diddy. You know what I'm saying? I can see you talking about Diddy. You know what I'm saying? You know, and all that, you know. And then Diddy was out there in LA a lot, you know what I'm saying? So, but my thing is, you talking about how a nigga getting plowed, <laughs> but here it is, you got allegations on you with that too, sir. I ain't whack three finger, whack three finger. You serious? You serious? Gonna jump out there and troll Meek? Well, you shouldn't be inviting Meek on to your transgender show. You hear me? <laughs> Well, I tell y'all, boy, these boys in Hollywood, boy, I'm telling y'all what's going on, man. I'm telling y'all, man, about what it is. But uh, <clears throat> outside the nigga kingdom, you know, I had an interesting conversation with uh, Sean Gary, the PM, man, last night, man. Uh, and for me to be able to go from, you know what I'm saying, behind the wall and looking at these dudes on TV, because I'm explaining something to y'all. For y'all who don't know, so you get a little, uh, and for y'all that do know, too. <clears throat> See, when you're in prison and you're in the shoe, right, your radio, you, you get a radio on the compound in the feds, you know, we got MP3 players and stuff like that. Or some places got satellite radios, uh, satellite, uh, you know, like uh, Shade 4 5 and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so sometimes you don't even need the, the MP3 player because they playing all the music on the... Uh, on the regular radio. But uh, when you go to the shoe, you, you don't have access to the same radio system as the compound. It's part of the punishment of being in the hole. So you're going to listen to, you know, the little FM country stations and stuff like that. So it's a lot of pop stations. So you get familiar with a lot of pop music because that's all you out, you mostly listen to when you're on these mountains and you're in the shoe. So <clears throat> a lot of people like, you're going to get a lot of Beyonce, Bruno Mars, you may hear a little Black Beetle, you know what I'm saying, like like pop songs, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, so a lot of the gritty stuff you ain't gonna hear. And I was telling Sean about, talking to him about like how some of the music that he wrote and some of the music that he did kind of like helped me get through some of them times because like I tell you, man, music is a spirit. So it moves you a certain type of way so it can relax you and all that. But you know, when you're back there in the hole, you're trying to find your mind you might try to find different ways to attach yourself to stuff. So the music is an outlet while you're working out, you know what I'm saying? While you're doing your whatever your little routine is in that in that particular uh environment that you're in while you're in the shoe. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just taking y'all outside the nigga, nigga kingdom for a little bit, you hear me? And uh talking about some real shit, you hear me? You know, we understand, I already know what's up with whack three fingers and you know what I'm saying, it's just clickbait, but at the same time. You know, he do he do got the allegations on, but back to the real shit, uh, with me in this conversation I had with Sean Gary. And um he told me, man, he listened to my story, we talked, we kicked we just talking about 
trauma, you know what I'm saying, in the black community. A lot of this stuff is traumatized, even the stuff that we see in entertainment. And when you're caught up in people's lives, it's traumatized because some people really looked up to people and some really, people really believed in people. You feel what I'm saying? And to have your, your idol or something like that uh, name tarnished and to find out everything that you liked and you believed in, you put so much energy in that it was fake. You know what I'm saying? That's why you compare it to, to wrestling. But talking to him that he's telling me about how he grew up in Europe and things of that nature and giving me the outlook from his outlook. You feel what I'm saying? The way he viewed the world. And sometimes you're not paying attention when you're out here. And he said, man, you said it like it was normal that you did three years straight in the hole. And I admit it to him. I said, because shit, because I'm fucked up. Mentally. That's a sign of being fucked up mentally when you can just... Or I ain't going to say a sign because it's not really nothing to me, but it's I don't let it get to me like that because I was built for it and I, and I beat it. <clears throat> I beat it mentally so it really don't bother me like that. But for people who ain't never been through it like him, and it's been on the level that he'd be on to hear these, this, these type of stories and to let him know that people that was in my situation, that your music inspired me to get through this situation as well, that was liberating on both sides for me to be able to say that. And there's a lot of artists out here that I do talk to, and I tell them the same thing because it's facts. You feel me? I'm getting a perspective from the dudes. That's why I say it's a lot of, I'm the penitentiary ambassador because there's people behind these walls that we made bowls to while we was back there looking at on TV Helped us get through a lot of time, listen to their music, we buy their music. Because a lot, of, a lot of consumership is coming from prisons. People in prison are, 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 are big consumers, especially of music. <clears throat> so we don't get caught up because we don't got internet. So we never caught up in the person's lives. That's why you see how my partner BG get out and he, gonna, he don't care about that because when we in prison, we don't know what's going on in your personal life because we don't have access to the internet. So we only go on by the music that you're making. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I say a lot of times the internet kind of messed up a lot of artists' money and a lot of artists' lives by putting their life on display instead of listening to the person for the music. We start, we call it in their personal life. But it's also good in, in this way because it also lets people know not to get caught up on everything people say. You feel what I'm saying? Do your own research, basically. It's another way of teaching that. Don't believe everything somebody tell you. That's the lesson in that. Now I say on this OG shit, you got to be able to evolve. You see what I'm saying? Like you use those type of situations. I'm not to bash nobody. You feel what I'm saying? Or but you want to use their stories to teach. It's the same thing. Like you know, no disrespect to religion. Like in religion, how do you, how you go back in your Bible? Those are, those are stories or parables, as they would call them, that teach you lessons. So we use the entertainers, and that's what I do. I use the entertainers' lies because this is a lot of people that they pay attention to. A lot of youngsters pay attention to the life of the celebrity as well as their music. So I would like to use their life when they fuck up or do some whole shit to teach people the lessons that I was taught but not give them the 1988, 89 type of version of it. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm your mama's little brother. That's why I'm your cool uncle, man. You feel me? Because I'm, I'm going to get out there with them and, and mingle with them and, and get into them when they play. You know what I'm saying? Because I got the sauce. You know what I'm saying? I got all that. You feel me? So I ain't scared of them. So I know to get out here. You know what I'm saying? I know how to be humble. You know what I'm saying? And humble is not not living your life. Hiding your lifestyle from a person is not being humble. You feel what I'm saying? Because yo, the way I live, I use it as a motivation for people, bro. I, I don't do this shit to stun on nobody or, you know what I'm saying, degrade nobody. I really use it for motivation. I'm going to talk my shit, though. You hear me? When a nigga, I'm going to talk my shit, but at the same time, for a person that has this much time as me, and if you was out here the whole time I was in prison, look at me as motivation. Don't look at me as a dude that's trying to shit on. I'm showing you that this shit can be done. You feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm not just talk, telling you. I'm giving you the ism. I'm giving you step for step how this shit go. And for people that's coming out, from prison to the free world, I'm I'm live, I'm laying it down for you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my boy Julio from DC. Shout out my boy Cash. Shout out that boy CJ. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out Gorilla Knots. You know what I'm saying? My boys out there, my boys out there in Dallas. You hear me? My boys out there holding that down for me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's a lot of dudes, man, that is all over the world, man, that, that I'm in tune with. Shout out that boy Ronnie Red. Down there in Tampa, you know what I'm saying? Y'all check him out on his podcast. He's doing his little thing, man. It's my man out of Tampa, man. 
I'm going to shout him out. I was in the feds with him. Good brother. Uh, so y'all check him out. You feel me? Uh, I love to see brothers coming out here doing their thing. You feel me? And it's a lot of stuff that dudes that was in my same generation, now that us went to jail, these, some of these niggas became fuck niggas and passed down the fuck nigga game because a lot of the real niggas was locked up. In my, you know what I'm saying? You hear them all the time. It was real in jail. You feel what I'm saying? But the air is ending. You feel me? The air is ending because a lot of dudes that was in, in my area, they coming home now or they are home. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to boy Big Mafia, man. Shout out to the boy Big Mafia, man. Shout that boy out too, man. Was one of the guys I did time with. So, I like shout them boys out on here. You hear me? I, I got my little... My podcast is up and running. But, you know, as your boy know, I like to learn first. So, I try to catch on to what's going on. I try to catch on instead of catch up. But I, see, I see a lot of y'all. And I, and I do look at other YouTubers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I look at it as like support. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to boy Mike, man, out there in H-Town, man, Houston, man. Shout out to that boy Nike boy out, you hear me? Shout out to Parley out. Shout out to, shout out to Real Report out, you feel me? I ain't, you know, shout out to Dollface out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of these guys, I pay attention to y'all. It ain't nothing wrong with sucking up game. You feel me? It's sponge, you feel me? So that's why I said that's part of evolving, it's learning. So... I'm telling this to the youngster, man. Don't never be afraid to learn nothing new. All this is new to me on YouTube. Don't be afraid of doing nothing new. If you want to be a producer, right, and you go to a job, and they're not hired as producers, but they got a job open in the mail room, don't be, don't be afraid to take the mail room job because the whole object, man, is get in the building. You, you hear me? That's the ism. Get in the building. Yeah. And set, and do your thing then. Maybe you go to lunch with the producers. Get you some game. You know what I'm saying? Now you start hanging around the people that's moving toward where you because you're putting yourself in that particular environment. And that's the ism for the day, man. I told y'all I got my coaching jacket on, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking my shit, my goddamn whack 100 shit, whack three finger shit in a way. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? Shit he got going on. Talking about Meek when he really need me invite Meek on that show. But at the same time, there's going to be some ism in this thing, man. You hear me? It's your mama's little brother, man. You're cool, Uncle. OG Freeze.